Uh, thanks for coming and supporting uh, these young people. Uh, last Saturday night, they were talking about that uh, confirmation uh, dinner of profession of their faith. And again, just always moved by that. It's the second year that we've done it this way. Oh, by the way, um, none of the parents have to come up today to stand behind their children. We were doing that for a couple years, but to, we're, we're new hope, so we decided to change it up this year. So, and I'm sure most of the parents are fine with that. And some of the uh, new parents had no idea that that was maybe part of the deal. So, anyway, um, so uh, again, this confirmation of faith dinner uh, they were referencing kind of when they were born, when they were baptized, and it just struck me that most of them were born in like 2001. And all of us that are a little bit older, we know what happened on 9-11 or 2001. And so again, here we are a number of years later, these, these uh, young people, these men, these women following uh, Jesus even after that thing happened. And so for many of us, you know, we're making that decision to keep uh, following uh, Jesus. This morning, before we do the confirmation, I uh, give a message. So I've been watching the AD, the Bible Continues, on Sunday night um, on NBC. And just been very, very moved. Uh, we decided as a church to kind of track with this uh, uh, TV uh, epic miniseries and uh, go through Acts chapters 1 to 10. I figured that even if the shows were really, really bad, um, that Acts chapters 1 to 10 are really, really good. And so it, there was no really big risk and gamble. But I tell you, I've been enjoying these shows so much, even the parts that disturb me. There's probably some, if you've been watching it, there's some parts that are probably have disturbed you. And uh, I think it's good uh, because I think some of that is probably some of the reality of what was happening. It's some of the reality that's still happening today. Again, some of the violence. And we're, we're Americans. Um, we just, we're, we're so, I mean, there, I don't even know how to explain it. Uh, but there's people being put to death for the name of Jesus today um, all over the world. And so when you see some of that violence. So anyway, um, Got a clip, uh, we've been, because we're a part of this, we get these clips that here's what you will see tonight, and we had to stop the clip early uh, because it goes into some of that uh, violence and it's just not appropriate for a church where there's a lot of young children. So again, we hope that you have your children in bed by 8 o'clock on Sunday night, or that you DV, or you TiVo it, or whatever it is that you guys would do, watch it later, or Hulu it, or Netflix it, I don't know. Anyway, I have no idea what I'm talking about. So let's watch the screens and uh, see what you're going to see tonight. I think it's awesome. So the full story is in uh, Acts chapter uh, 4, I believe, or maybe it's chapter 5. Um, so what I want to do for the remaining time this morning is uh, just look at some of the sections in Acts chapter 3, chapter 4, and chapter 5, because uh, what I think we see happening here and what still happens in our day is what I would call kind of bold kingdom expanding through drama and through action. This whole uh, movement of Jesus continues on to this day, and uh, it's happening in this room. It's happening in rooms around our country, around our world. It's happening in souls that matter. We're going to be coming back to that over and over again. But when uh, the, the, the first early messages that are given by Peter, that are given by some of the disciples in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, there's always kind of this pattern that uh, follows. Um, and so that's, that's the pattern I want us to think about this morning. That oftentimes when they would start telling about Jesus, they would say, it's about Jesus. What matters most, that's the title of today's message, what matters most, what matters most, that it's about Jesus. And then they would always say, and this is really, really hard words, and you can see sometimes why they would kind of stir some anger, you crucified him, God raised him, say you're sorry, follow Jesus with us. Because it's what matters most. So Peter does that in Pentecost, in, in, in Acts chapter 2. Uh, there's some of that that happens in Acts chapter 3, Acts, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5. Again, always this pattern. It's about Jesus. We're going to talk about Jesus. If you want to know why we're standing here before you, it's about Jesus. It's what matters most. You crucified him. God raised him. Say you're sorry. Follow Jesus with us. Follow Jesus with us. It's what matters most. So there's a part of uh, what I wanted to do the, this morning is uh, as we look at some of these sections in Acts chapters 3, 4, and 5, so I want to read them with some, it's going to be for me, maybe it'd be for you too, just some kind of breathless wonder and kind of a racing heart. Because there is a emotion that's happening here. There's, there's souls that are getting stirred from, uh, in, in following this Jesus. Even when they realize that you crucified him, but God raised him. Again, the evidence that God raised him is just, is just sweeping. And then this whole idea that say you're sorry, follow Jesus with us. Let's go on this adventure together. So this breathless wonder and racing heart. So here's Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. 
One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the, in the afternoon. Now, a man crippled from birth, crippled from birth. That's, that's a huge deal. Later on, we, we'll, we'll read that he was 40 years old. So for 40 years, so again, so there's this, this huge deal. Uh, people knew who this was. Was being carried to the temple co- gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John, and then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said these words, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taken him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong, and he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Again, uh, I've been in church world for quite a few years. I wasn't in it in my early years in that. But in my teenage years, I went, in, went got into it and uh, would go to uh, uh, this church camp. And we used to sing a song, Silver or Gold, I Have You None. Uh, I'll spare you, I'll spare you. Um, uh, but, uh, the, the, uh, but in the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And this man went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and maybe some of you know that. I'm sorry if you do know, know that or if that stu- gets stuck in your head. But again, the rest of the chapter, the rest of the chapter, as people are coming around, they, they're, I mean, they, they're witnessing a miracle. Here's this man. They saw him. They saw him. They saw him. Some of them gave money to him over the years so he could have enough food to, to, to eat so he could stay alive. And now they're watching him walking around, leaping. He's with the disciples. And they, just, and, and they have it. Peter starts to talk. If you want to know what's happened here today, it's about Jesus. It's what matters most. You crucified him. God raised him. Say you're sorry, follow Jesus with us. It's after Acts chapter 2, and so 3,000 have already started following Jesus when Peter gave that message of you crucified him, God raised him, say you're sorry, follow Jesus with us, and now there's going to be more people that are hearing this same message. Then you get into Acts chapter 4, and here's what we read, and it's kind of what we uh, watched uh, on the screens. So it says, The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. Again, giving that message. You crucified him. God raised him. Say you're sorry. Follow Jesus with us. So they come up as they're preaching that message again. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. So they seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. Again, that same message. It's about Jesus. It's what matters most. You crucified him. God raised him. Say you're sorry. Follow Jesus with us. Until now it grows to 5,000. So it says, The next day the rulers and elders and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there, and so were Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the main character that you saw. John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. So they had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power, by what name did you do this? Peter... Filled with the Holy Spirit, and that was a promise of Jesus. Whenever you'd come before these authorities and you're kind of all nervous, and you don't know what's going to go, the Holy Spirit's going to come in you and you're going to say words that you have no idea where they came from, but they came from the Holy Spirit. So Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but God raised him from the dead, and this man stands before you healed. And so, uh, the powers that be, it's just a problem that won't go away now. So we read in these early chapters that this Gamaliel gets up and kind of says, um, Hey, you know, there's kind of a history of some people gathering together, following a person, kind of stirring some things up, but then they kind of just fade away. And so of these men that are before you, of this, all these people that are coming to follow the Jesus that are before you, if it's not of God, it's just going to fade away. But if it is of God, you'll find yourselves going against God. And so the sentence was commuted that day. 
but then they were also flogged. I think it's always hard to hear that message that you crucified him. I'm a part of him being crucified. You're a part of him being crucified. I mean, I know you're good Americans. I know you're nice to your kids. I mean, you love your kids. Some of these 19, these 19 that are getting confirmed. I know you love, you just, you pour your life. You bought them a new dress. You brought them, in, bought them a new outfit. You know, you're going to have a party for them. You love your children, but you know, you're a part. You crucified them. I, I crucified them. God raised him. God raised him. I mean, there's just so much evidence that God raised him. I mean, this movement continues to, to go on. It just continues. It's going on in me. It's going on in so many of you. It, it can go on in all of us. God raised him. And say you're sorry. I mean, I, I just practice over and over. I just, I'm sorry that there's a part of me, there's a part of me that I know put Jesus on the cross. It's my sins that I see when I look at Jesus on the cross. But I also know that there's forgiveness. And I'm invited to follow him. Not just follow him how I want to follow him, but follow him as so many others before me have followed. Follow him as so many today are following him and so many others are going to come to follow him. His kingdom, his kingdom, his kingdom is always expanding. There's a wonder to that. There's a breathless wonder to that. There's a racing heart that happens when you see that happen over and over again. So again, the rest of chapter 4 is all about, you know, it's about Jesus, what matters most. You crucified him. God raised him. Say you're sorry. Follow Jesus with us. It's what matters most. You get into chapter 5, and it's kind of the same thing, you know. Uh, uh, it's about Jesus. It's what matters most. You crucified him. God raised him. Say you're sorry. Follow Jesus with us, and people do. We get to the end of chapter 5, and uh, the disciples are leaving what happens to them that we didn't show on this clip. And here's what the Bible records for us. So they called the apostles in and had them flogged. And then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and then let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering, disgrace for the name. And day after day, in the temple courts, from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Their bodies we're in a lot of pain. But they knew that their souls were alive. That their souls were somehow touched by this God. This God that sometimes is confusing to us because he's the Father. He's Jesus. He's the Holy Spirit. They just knew. They just knew. Their souls are there. So whatever happens to our bodies, whatever happens to our lives, whatever happens to the lives of our children, it's about Jesus. It's what matters most. All the disciples knew that they were a part of Jesus being crucified. Peter would never forget. Thomas would never forget. John would never forget. None of them would ever forget. But nor would they forget when God raised him. And Jesus started appearing to them over those 40 days, in and out, in and out, teaching them about the kingdom of God. And then, so they left suffering. But they were rejoicing. Well, I tell you, I want that for our souls. I want that for this culture that we live in. Again, there's a lot of uh, followers of Jesus in our American culture, and there's a lot of bemoaning about how terrible the culture is. I hear it all the time and stuff, and I just, I just, I don't know, I can't go with it too much. 
Because I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that I'm never going to get flogged and put in prison because I proclaim Jesus with reckless abandon. I'm hoping, I'm praying that just one day I'm going to keep serving Jesus, keep serving Jesus, proclaiming, proclaiming, seeing this kingdom grow, knowing that it's about Jesus, it's what matters most, that I'm a a part of crucifying him, I'm a part of of watching him, God raised him from the dead, I'm a part of saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and I'm just going to follow. And one day, one day, I'm hoping 10 years from now, 20 years from now, I'll take a last breath and I'll be in glory. And I won't ever have to suffer for the name other than some people thinking I'm a weirdo. But no one ever laying a hard hand against me. But I read the stories today. of Men and women of husbands, fathers and mothers who still are being put to death for this name of Jesus and sometimes their children are being put to death too. And it horrifies me. But yet I know that Jesus has them. And their souls are well cared for. I know my soul is well, your soul can be well cared for too, even if you're never, but again, the wonders, the wonders, the wonders sometimes just boggles my mind, boggles my mind that I'm going to be able to be in heaven with the glory and the wonder of Jesus all around and this whole amazing scene that's going to be in heaven that the Bible talks about and I'm going to be by shoulder to shoulder with people that gave their lives in a culture that just so different from mine. But they follow Jesus. That's what we'll have in common. We follow Jesus. Again, sometimes we have more to connect with and people that follow this Jesus, follow this Jesus, follow this Jesus and they never learn to read or write. We have more in common with them, more in being followers of Jesus with them than sometimes we do with some of our fellow Packer fans. And maybe there's a few other people that are in this room today that aren't Packer fans, but you know what I'm talking about. Whatever fan you are, you, have a, you sometimes think, you know, hey, we're on the same team. We're going, we're going, we're going. And I want to follow this Jesus. Because that's what matters most. I know I'm a part of crucifying him, but I also know that I'm a part of watching God raise him from the dead. I'm the one, I get to be the one saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Man, I want to follow this Jesus. Because it's what matters most. Because one day, we're not going to be breathing any other praise for some team or any other thing that we have here in America before us. And God, this Jesus, it's what matters most. So this morning, to wrap this up, I don't think God's done yet. I just don't think he's done yet. Again, as we ask ourselves, kind of who's here today? Who's here today? Well, we know that there's men here, there's women here, there's these teens, these confirmands, these young people, 13, 14 years old. We know that there's some children. So there's all this variety of ages and kind of these stages of life. We know that there are Jesus followers here today. And again, probably, and I'm, I want to, I don't be, mean to be offensive there. I'm hoping that some of you are here that you're not Jesus followers yet. But, you know, you're maybe asking myself, maybe I, should I consider it? So there's Jesus followers here, there's not Jesus followers. And so why are we gathered here today? Why are we gathered here today? Maybe some of it's just kind of family responsibility, you know, this, uh, this, this niece, this nephew, this grandson, this granddaughter, this, you know, child that I sponsored as, as, as their baptism sponsor in that. But maybe we think about that. But you know why we're here today? It's about Jesus. It's what mattered most. We crucified him. God raised him. Say you're sorry. Let's follow this Jesus together. Let's be an example to some of these young people that they're following us as we're following Jesus. Let's be an example to these young people as they keep following Jesus. There's others that are going to follow Jesus as they're following Jesus. There's a wonder to this uh, thing called the church. There's this, this wonder to this th- kind of following this Jesus. Here at New Hope, we oftentimes talk about this idea that what if we could live a life that is just kind of more Jesus, less world. More Jesus, less world. We, we use this, um, what we call a spiritual continuum. Uh, again, some of you have seen this before. and Probably for some of you, this is the first time ever that you've going to see this. We're going to br- put it up on the screen and just going to look at it. So there's this whole idea that we're following Jesus. So the explorer to the left, these are the people that they're not yet following Jesus. They know about Jesus. They know about Christmas. They know about Easter. 
know about the church. They know about hymns. Know about confirmation. Know about, you know, the Lord's Prayer. Know about the Bible. You know, just, they, they know, but they just, they really, they're, they're not really following Jesus. They know about him, so they're exploring. And maybe Jesus is going to do something in their life, and they'll come across to the other side of the cross, and they'll start following this Jesus. They're beginning. Again, all the people in the, te- in the New Testament that we read about in Acts chapter 1 to 10, so many of them are just beginning. Even the disciples, that's a whole new world for them after Jesus ascends and this early church begins. It's never been done before. But they keep following and they keep learning. Again, as the Apostle Paul and some of the other apostles end up writing most of the New Testament, they're writing to people who are just beginning to follow. And what do beginners do over, over and over? They make mistakes. So Paul writes them, okay, you're making this mistake, but it's about Jesus. It's what matters most. You know how it is that you were involved in crucifying him. You know how it is that God has raised him from the dead. You know how it is that you have come to say that you're sorry, you've repented of your sins, and now you're following Jesus with us. Now let's stop making that mistake and get back on track and following Jesus. And so they do that, and and they start following, and then they become what we'd call close to Jesus, and then become what uh, centered. Again, what I want us to think about this morning is that as you go this way, it's all about more Jesus, less world. If you go the other way, it's all about less Jesus, more world. And that matters the least. And all of us will come to face that truth someday, that that matters the least, if you think it's going to be less Jesus in more world. But what matters most is we realize that it's more Jesus, less world, until there is no world, and it's all about Jesus. Now, one last thing, and I'll be done. What you're looking up at in the screen is uh, not something that happens, that doesn't happen until you're in your 20s or in your 30s or maybe in your 40s or 50s. Some of the confirmation students up here that you'll see in a few moments are already centered in Jesus. They've been practicing more Jesus, less world for most of their lives because they're in a family that was practicing that. Some of these young people, they, when they get $10, they give a dollar to Jesus. They're going to grow that when they get $100, they're going to give $10 to Jesus. They're going to grow, they're just centered. When they get $1,000, they're going to get $100. When they get $10,000, they're going to give $1,000. They won't even think about it. It won't be a pain. It'll be a joy that they get to do it. Some of these uh, young people, they're already kind of that more Jesus, less world. They can't imagine a day without opening up their Bible. Not for the whole day, but they just love to open up their Bible and to read about Jesus. Uh, again, maybe they're, some of them are they're, 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 uh, uh, getting motivated to read kind of Acts chapters 1 through 10 because their parents are, you know, they're old enough to start watching some of this violence. But yet some of the true story of how the kingdom of God has been ever expanding, how it is that we're on the shoulders of these spiritual people that have gone before us. They can't imagine a day without praying. They can't imagine a day or a a week without serving somehow. Again, many of our young people, they already serve the other youngsters, the younger people in them, in like our connection line, in our tender care ministries. Some of them go out with their parents and they go and serve food to others that are less less fortunate. Some of them, their choice of music is to listen to Jesus' music. Not that it makes them any better, but they just love to listen to Jesus' music. Again, all the uh, students today, when they come through, they're going to get their uh, confirmation certificate. And inside is this uh, CD that's a gift from our church. It's Mercy Me, Welcome to the New. And uh, again, these are so many great songs. The last song on this is called Dear Younger Me. Again, the uh, people that sing this, this Mercy Me group, uh, some of you might know that it's the oh, I Can Only Imagine. That was out probably, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. Again, they keep singing, keep singing wonderful songs. There's some great songs on this uh, CD. You can load it on your computer, load it on your iPad, uh, your iPod, your cell phone. I don't know what other technology that you have, um, but you probably won't be listening to it on a CD. Uh, um, but this Dear Younger Me, and the lead singer, this Bart Miller, is just singing a song of how it was so hard and so confusing to follow this Jesus, but how this God kept 
inviting him to follow, to follow, to follow. And here he is all these years later, living a centered kind of life. And that's what can happen for us too. So there are centered youth following and obeying Jesus, and others are on the way, and not just youth, but 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40, 50, and 60 years old. It doesn't matter when you step into this continuum. We're already into it. What matters most is following this Jesus because we crucified him. And if you look, there is no doubt that God raised him. And we say we're sorry. I mean, I say I'm sorry over and over and over again for the things that I, man, I wish I would have said something there. Boy, I wish I would have done that. Why do I have to be so selfish? Why do I, I'm sorry. Jesus, I'm so amazed that I get to follow you follow you inspired by so many that have gone before me to be inspired to follow you with so many that are following you today believing 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 you're not done yet and you're not done in this room no matter what your age is you can start following Jesus in a new way in a new way I pray you will let's pray So Jesus, wonders of wonders again as we consider these words that are almost 2,000 years old, but yet they still stir a excitement, they stir a, a heartbeat, they stir a breathless wonder in us as we continue to follow you. Jesus, your invitation is always there, and so we pray that you'll continue to help us, to help us, to help us, to know that what matters most, that it's about you, Jesus. We are part of you being crucified. We are part of being able to be a, a part of this wonder of knowing that God has raised you from the dead. Oh, man, Jesus, you are alive. And so we say we, we're sorry. Oh, I know I just practice that over and over again. And that I get to follow you. That I get to follow you and serve you as a pastor here at New Hope. That I get to follow and serve you in this year of 2015 in this culture of America. That I get to hear stories about how my brothers and sisters from places around the world are following you and sometimes suffering and even dying for that today. So Jesus, I know there is a mercy that continues. So thank you for your mercy here in this room. Thank you for your mercy that you're pouring out on these 19 young people. So Jesus, we pray all these things in your name. And again, as followers and maybe people that are coming to follow you Jesus we pray this prayer that uh, we all know and so uh, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to have the confirmands. If you would start taking your position over against that wall as you were instructed beforehand. So they're going to get up. Some music's going to start uh, playing. Uh, they're going to come across as they've been instructed, receive their certificates, their gift, and line up uh, behind me. And so, uh, again, it's uh, more than appropriate for you to um, give a little clap uh, after uh, each student uh, comes up. And... And the lovely Mrs. Vogel, my youngest daughter, uh, who will be there, uh, the one that will be uh, serving and uh, inviting them into Crave, the crave rama experience, will be handing them their certificate and gift. So uh, help me welcome, first of all, Elizabeth Ament.
and O'Brien Arndt. Dakota Blazer. Teddy Gullickson. Congratulations. Emily Hayes. Hey, Teddy. Samantha Hernke. Good job, Emily. Quinn Croon. Congratulations. You're shaking my hand. Paige Larson. My brother. Jersey Pop. Grace Reed. Sydney Reisner. Lacey Slots. Sophia Tesh. Dalton Thurber. Caitlin Tynesma. Madison Ulrich. And one typo in our bulletin and our apologies, but it's Kaylee Waters. Kara Weber. And Emily Wise. So uh, when we were doing this real quick practice beforehand, the repeated question from most of these students was, do we have to say anything? And I said, no, no, you just have to come up and stand and look beautiful or handsome. And so aren't they doing a good job looking beautiful and handsome? So here at New Hope, we are always talking about this idea that behind every set of eyes I look into, there's a soul that matters to God. Behind the set of 19 eyes you're looking into, there's souls that matter to God. God knew about these souls before they were born. He was uh, joyful when they were born. He brought them into the waters of baptism. I'm real old because a number of these young people I baptized way back when. Um, so now I get to confirm them. And who knows, maybe one day I'll even get to perform their wedding celebrations. Looking forward to that? Guys, and yeah. So uh, behind every set of eyes, there's a soul that matters to God. Then we talk about this idea that we want to be inviting and inspiring souls to follow this Jesus. And so that was what today was about, inviting and inspiring. These, uh, they continue to be invited and inspired, invited and inspired, invited and inspired to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus with some of the music that we get to do today. Follow Jesus by serving. Follow Jesus by giving. Follow Jesus by reading his word. Follow, follow. Inspired and invited and invited and inspired to follow Jesus. Then we talk about this, that... Each one of them, and all of you too, that were God's chosen, holy, and dearly loved. This Colossians 3.12 passage that we just keep repeating here. Each one of them, chosen, holy, and dearly loved. Even when the captains line up and they're the last one chosen for kickball, for soccer, for volleyball, for the spelling bee, for the bat, math deal, I don't, you know. But God says, you're chosen, you're holy, and you're dearly loved. Then the last thing that we talk about, what you heard, more Jesus, less world. More Jesus, less world. Some of them are already living it. Some are going to be moving into it. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying as a church. We're going to help them. Crave starts up, and uh, we're just praying that 
they'll follow this Jesus. And that you as parents will help them to follow Jesus. That you parents are following Jesus to help them follow Jesus. That some of you grandparents are following Jesus to help them follow Jesus. That some of you are, who are sponsors, aunts and uncles, that you're following Jesus for them to follow Jesus. That you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray that they would follow this Jesus. They're going to return to their seats in a moment. We're going to have a special song by one of our young people, a college student that I believe is maybe home already from college or maybe he's still got a couple weeks left, but uh, he is able to be here and to serve us with this way. He was up here not too many years ago himself. He's always following Jesus and going to sing a song for us. And then um, we'll sing one last song, then they're going to uh, come back up. We'll do a big group picture, and then we'll uh, do some... Uh, uh, individual pictures as you want. But um, before I let them go, I want all of us to watch the side screens because their teacher, their confirmand instructor, Mr. Mo, was not able to be with us today. And so here's a quick message from Mr. Mo. Congratulations, confirmands. Excellent job Saturday night at the Statement of Faith Banquet. Welcome to the start of examining your faith journey. I pray you continue examining your faith your entire life, to take a look at your faith walk your entire life. I'm sorry I cannot be there today. I'm down in Ohio with my daughter who is graduating from college. One of the ways that you can continue to grow that faith is taking an opportunity to participate each week in church and also having an opportunity to go to Crave. Blessings on the rest of your day and enjoy it.